There's a spacecraft that could take NASA back to the moon, but it's not the one you think. For nearly two decades, NASA has poured billions into building the Orion spacecraft, a capsule meant to be the crown jewel of the Artemis program. It was supposed to be faster, cheaper, and powerful enough to send astronauts straight to the lunar surface in a single launch. But instead of becoming NASA's next Apollo, Orion has turned into a billion-dollar burden, weighed down by delays, cost overruns, and outdated design choices. Meanwhile, in the private sector, a quiet revolution has been unfolding. SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a spacecraft originally built for short missions to the International Space Station, is now emerging as the real contender. A proven, lighter, more efficient, and far cheaper alternative that may finally solve the problems Orion couldn't. Here's the twist. NASA's backup plan might just outperform its flagship. The Dragon platform has already flown multiple crews safely to orbit and back. With a few smart upgrades, it could meet NASA's deep space standards and do so years ahead of schedule and billions under budget. So how did SpaceX manage to outpace a program backed by America's biggest aerospace contractors? Why is NASA still clinging to a spacecraft that seems stuck in the past? And could the future of lunar exploration depend not on the Orion, but on a dragon? Welcome to Space Update 24 Hours, where we break down the real stories behind the space race reshaping our future. Let's dive right in. When NASA first unveiled the Orion spacecraft back in 2006, it was supposed to mark the beginning of a new era, a symbol of America's return to deep space exploration. The plan was bold. Orion would ride atop a giant rocket, reach lunar orbit, and pave the way for astronauts to walk on the moon once again. But as the years went by, the dream started to drift. The Constellation program, the original project behind Orion, was canceled in 2010. Still, NASA refused to abandon the spacecraft. Billions had already been invested, and scrapping it would have been politically unthinkable. So Orion was reborn under a new name, the Artemis program. NASA promised that this time, things would be different. They'd learn from Apollo, from shuttle, from decades of hard lessons. Orion and its massive launch partner, the Space Launch System, would bring back the glory of the 1960s. America leading humanity beyond Earth once again. But behind the patriotic speeches and cinematic launch videos, reality told a different story. What was meant to be NASA's most advanced spacecraft quickly became a case study in bureaucratic stagnation. After nearly two decades of development, Orion has yet to fly a single astronaut. The cost? Over $30 billion. Add in the SLS rocket, and that number balloons past $90 billion more than the cost of building two international space stations. And the performance issues? They run deep. Orion's weight alone makes it one of the most inefficient spacecraft ever built. With its abort system attached, it weighs over 33 metric tons, heavier than what the SLS Block 1 rocket can comfortably lift to lunar orbit. That means every Artemis launch is pushed to the very limits of the rocket's design. There's no margin for error. Even its protective heat shield, meant to safeguard astronauts during re-entry, has shown troubling results. The Avcoat material, a derivative of what Apollo used in the 1960s, suffered unexpected charring and erosion during Artemis the Moon in 2022. Over a hundred spots showed deeper damage than expected. For a program that's already behind schedule, these are not small problems. NASA's contractors, especially Lockheed Martin, did make adjustments. But those fixes created new complications. Engineers later admitted that Orion's materials and design choices were a legacy burden, trapped by old methods that no longer make sense in the age of reusable spacecraft. And then there's the irony. The same company already built modern heat shields, the PKX series, that have survived brutal Martian entries on curiosity and perseverance. Yet NASA stuck with the older material for Orion, the one capsule meant to protect human lives. Meanwhile, while Orion struggled through paperwork and politics, SpaceX quietly delivered. In just six years, it built the Crew Dragon, a fully operational, reusable spacecraft that's already flown dozens of astronauts to orbit and back. Dragon isn't just cheaper, it's smarter. It uses modern materials, streamlined systems, and minimal parts. 
It's lighter, faster to build, and fully capable of autonomous docking. Something NASA's next-gen spacecraft still can't do without manual backup. Most importantly, Dragon flies. Repeatedly, safely, reliably. So the question is, why is NASA still betting everything on Orion? To answer that, we have to look at how these spacecraft were built and under what incentives. Orion was developed under a cost-plus contract, a system that pays contractors more the longer and more expensive the project becomes. It's the opposite of innovation. There's no urgency to finish fast, no reward for efficiency, just guaranteed profits for time spent. SpaceX, on the other hand, operated under a fixed price contract. They were given a clear budget and told to deliver or lose the deal. That constraint forced innovation. It's what made SpaceX move fast, test often, and learn from failure instead of hiding it. Every time Crew Dragon launched, landed, or splashed down, the data went straight into the next design. Each iteration improved. Every failure taught them something. That's the essence of the SpaceX philosophy. Build, break, learn, and build again. And this approach didn't just build a spacecraft. It built momentum. SpaceX's culture is radically open. Engineers, astronauts, and managers talk directly. Feedback loops are immediate. Decisions are made in days, not months. When NASA's astronauts flew on Crew Dragon for the first time, they said it felt like working with SpaceX, not for them. That's a stark contrast to Boeing's Starliner, which was supposed to be SpaceX's competitor. Boeing's spacecraft spent years in development, hit repeated software failures, and even left astronauts stranded during testing. It's not that Boeing's engineers are incapable. They're some of the best in the world. But the company's leadership culture changed. After its merger with McDonnell Douglas, Boeing shifted focus from engineering excellence to financial performance. The people making the decisions weren't the ones who understood the technology. They understood profit margins. That's how projects like Starliner and SLS became corporate safety nets, not engineering milestones. The longer they take, the more they earn. It's a system Elon Musk has criticized openly for years. Good engineers at Boeing and Lockheed, but cost plus contracts must die because when failure becomes profitable, success stops being necessary. Now contrast that with SpaceX again. The company reinvests its profits into its next goal, reusability, speed, and cost efficiency. The Dragon capsule is a perfect example. Its systems are modular, its structure is adaptable, and its reusability gives it an economic edge Orion could never match. Even more fascinating, SpaceX has already been quietly working on deep space variants of Dragon under NASA's own contracts. Versions with enhanced life support, improved radiation shielding, and more powerful propulsion systems. They're lighter, faster, and could be ready far sooner than Orion's next upgrade cycle. If NASA decides to shift gears, Dragon could become the backbone of a modular lunar transport system, one where astronauts travel from Earth to low orbit aboard Dragon, then transfer to Starship's HLS for the journey to the moon's surface. It's flexible, efficient, and scalable exactly what the Artemis program was supposed to be. So here's the bigger picture. This isn't just a fight between two spacecraft. It's a clash between two philosophies. One believes progress happens through control, committees, and contracts. The other believes progress happens through iteration, risk, and relentless improvement. And right now, the results speak for themselves. SpaceX is flying astronauts regularly. NASA's Orion hasn't even left the ground with a crew. Boeing's Starliner is still trying to prove it's safe, and yet the agency continues to defend these legacy systems, trapped between politics and pride. But change is coming. The success of Crew Dragon, and soon Starship, is rewriting the rules. NASA can't ignore it forever. The agency that once put men on the moon now has to decide, keep funding yesterday's spacecraft, or embrace the one already proving it can do tomorrow's job. In the end, this story isn't just about rockets or spacecraft, it's about mindset. NASA's Orion represents the old world. Powerful, ambitious, but trapped in bureaucracy and tradition. SpaceX's Dragon, on the other hand, embodies a new kind of engineering. One built on iteration, efficiency, and accountability. 
One program spends decades explaining delays. The other learns, adapts, and launches again. And that's the real difference. Not in metal or materials, but in mentality. If NASA truly wants to lead humanity beyond Earth again, it may need to stop protecting legacy projects and start embracing innovation, even if it means letting a private company carry the torch. Because progress doesn't wait for permission, it moves forward with those bold enough to build faster, fail smarter, and try again. Maybe the next spacecraft to take us back to the moon won't come from a government lab, but from a hangar in Hawthorne in California, where a group of engineers still believe that impossible is just another problem waiting to be solved. If you found this story thought-provoking, hit that like button, share it with others who follow the future of space flight, and tell us your take. Orion or Dragon, which one do you think will lead humanity's return to the moon? And don't forget to subscribe to Space Update 24 Hours for more deep dives into the technology, drama, and breakthroughs shaping the next space race. The next launch could change everything, and you'll want to be here when it does.